Oye, ¿qué onda, locos? Es lunes otra vez. So you know what that means? Mexican movie Monday. Today, I think I downloaded the wrong Joker movie. Nah, this is Chicuarotes. Chicuarotes is an awesome film, especially if you want to see Bruno Mars acting. It's directed by Gael Garcia Bernal, uh, the guy who did the voice acting for Hector and Coco. It was in Y Tu Mamá También and Amores Peros. A few of the reviews I've seen on Rotten Tomatoes just display the vast amounts of difference in ideologies. Some of the reviews indicate that the hybrids between comedy and tragedy make it hard to come out of this laughing, but I think that's what they were going for, so it's a great point to say because I don't think they were trying to make a stand-up atmosphere towards the movie. And I mean 20%? Come on. From now on, I think I'm just going to listen to IMDb ratings, which is like 6.9 out of 10, and that makes better sense. The problem I have with most of these reviews is that while they may consider the transitions of scenes extreme or weak, I feel like in actuality these transitions are pretty reasonable, especially in an unstable poverty class which can switch in the blink of an eye from something like a friendly encounter into a pistol-involved encounter. Of course I had problems with the movie, you know? The problems I had were like the film's resolve, you know, the lethargic nature of the thing. And I felt that the girl could have been played a little bit more central and some of the social constructs were not fully fleshed out alongside Moletoko's character. This is probably a movie that fell short of something like Vuelven. It tried to offer the same bit of insight that Vuelven does, but it was a bit too in-your-face and ham-fisted. There's a big problem that will forever stick out of a film like Chicuarotes. And that's the fact that the characters are teenagers. You know, as, as people age, we try to imagine that uh, their free will starts to expand, probably due to the expansion of the prefrontal cortex. So with something like Vuelven, we automatically assume that the characters are victims of their circumstance. So if one of the characters shoots somebody or hurts somebody, we simply state that they're children. They could not imagine that scenario. They don't know what's actually going on. But in something like Chicuarotes, no, we, we don't give that same bit of leniency. And the reason is because they're teenagers. We like to imagine that teenagers have that same free will and we imagine ourselves as teenagers. And we say, would we have done that same thing in that same instance? And no, we wouldn't have. And then we, we can obviously roll compass based on this direction. Like why didn't Moloteco stop Cagalera? Throughout the film, we see Moloteco stumble around making decisions, either to insinuate that he may be mentally handicapped or that he's just an extreme follower. <laughs> Yo también estoy llorando. Ay. <laughs> Another one is like, why did Cagaleros rob all those people on the bus? You know, Cagalero is a victim of his circumstance too. But so are all the people on the bus. You know, they're, they're dealing with similar situations that Cagalero deals with. So just taking something by force automatically makes you feel like he had a choice there to not do that. Or did, why did Cagaleta feel it was okay to be like the father he hated? Some of the best things in the movie, though, are the performances by the older actors. For me, the best actor was the guy who played Baturo, Inok Leano. Man, he made me despise him so much and reminded me of the bad people I've met over the years in, like, negative circumstances. There's also the politician in Roma. Of course, Dolores Heredia always does an awesome job, and Daniel Cacho is amazing. Daniel Cacho was actually Tito in uh, Kronos. The movie Chicuarotes begins with two clowns living in Xochil Milco, making jokes on a bus and then asking for change. The two main characters are Cagalera, he's the clown with the crappy makeup, no mames. and Moloteco as the professional payaso. Eee, what's up? Cagalera says we would much rather make you laugh than make you scared. The playfulness of his character makes you feel a bit uncomfortable, but not entirely scared in the beginning. He just kind of looks homeless. Since the people won't give him money, Cagalero pulls out a gun to steal some. It's funny how quick things change from playful to fearful in an unstable place like Mexico. Not all places in Mexico are like this, but there are a few. It turns out Cagalero stole that gun from his stepdad, Baturo. Cagalero then steals from his friend, who's a bus driver, gets food that should go to the homeless, makes fun of his gay brother for speaking in a flamboyant voice, <laughs> and goes to beat up Said with no evidence. Cagalera is a piece of shit, just saying. Cagalera then pulls a gun out on Said, and the butcher comes out to stop the fight. He then takes Cagalera's gun. 
Then Moloteco and Cagalera hang out outside in their usual spot, a few feet away from what looks like a convenience store, on a torn out car seat. Once Cagalera goes home, we are formally introduced to Baturo and his abusive ways, when he brings home a live turkey. And let me tell you, this movie is not for the faint of heart. Some of these scenes are so realistic, it, it may scare you, it's just a fair warning. Cagalera then cowards his way out of the house, which I think is what makes me hate him the most. He pretty much ditched his sister and brother there, with the abusive dad. So of course he runs away to his girlfriend's house. Cagalera goes with some guy named Blanchado looking for money. I guess this part feels pretty numb, besides the part that Cagalera carries out women's clothes in order to sell it. Such a Mexican thing, you know, to sell clothes. I used to shop at the Ropa Usa, which is like a thrift store of a thrift store. The thrift store sells shirts for like one or two bucks. Ropa Usa sell by the pounds. So I used to buy pounds of jeans for like five bucks. I remember once after getting one of my first paychecks from Chick-fil-A, I went to the Ropa Usa and I brought a $20 bill. I found this Martin Luther King shirt that I really wanted. I took it to the front counter. When I went to go and purchase it, the lady said it would cost a nickel. She saw the $20 bill and just said, just take it. Where was I going with that? I don't know. Well, in the movie, I imagine that they are able to somehow sell all these girl clothes. Then more who cares stuff happens with Blanchado. And later on, Cagalera, thinking he finally solved a way to get his gun back, decides to kidnap the butcher's son. And the music's slow dissension and pitch matches closely as you feel his dissension into a dark place that he'll never be able to get back from. <laughs> Somewhere inside, I think we are the eyes of Moloteco, a bit helpless amidst of all the bad people in his life. As the morons writing a ransom note, he doesn't notice his brother eating a fucking apple behind him. So then Cagalera asks for some assistance writing it, and threatens to show their mom about the gay magazines under his bed. <sighs> we also get some wacky scene where Cagalera sneaks in like James Bond in front of the butcher. We begin to see Moloteco's heart as he speaks to the little boy they kidnap and just removes his restraints. Then, Tito shows up. I a fox. Do they just hire this guy to see him meet? Maybe he's the best at eating on camera. Cagaleta goes to meet his dad at what looks like a bar. And why does Baturo look like he wears a woman's nightgown everywhere? Baturo then hits Cagaleta on the head with what looks like a brick. Cagaleta's girlfriend then releases the kidnapped boy. Psycho dad returns home only to find Cagaleta there and sprays him with what looks like raid. The mom then knows what she must do. Cagaleta begins to vomit and gets poison from the raid. So his sister goes and gets him some milk from a store, accidentally getting some rotten milk. So, just like Cagalero does, he complains. So he complains to his sister that she chose some expired milk. Then he says to his gay brother, hey, you don't have anywhere to go or what? And the brother kind of rats him out. The city goes on a lynch mob looking for the person who kidnapped the boy. And why are there so many men with purses? While well, the mob is busy, Chilamil, aka Tito, tells the four to separate with him and tells Moloteco and Cagalera to assist him to violate Cagalera's girlfriend. And guess what? If this movie couldn't get worse regarding Cagalera, Cagalera assists Chilamil. So yes, Cagalera is indeed a piece of shit. Even the gay brother tries to stand up for her. No tuvo nada que ver en esto. But nobody else does anything. All this fighting. And guess what? Chilamil shoots his foot. <laughs> and then shoots Moloteco. Cagalera then accidentally stabs Chilamil. Oh man, I watched this movie one time and I thought I could watch it again without crime. But damn, that part that Moloteco is gasping for air and just wishing for his friend to be there. And Cagalera does one last piece of shit thing for him and leaves him to die alone. We end of course with nobody mourning Baturo and Cagalera being left alone in a pit stop and the last shot shows Suheli, Cagalera's girlfriend, debating on going back home or going with Cagalera. I personally did not think this movie was extremely deep or offered deep insight into the big questions. No mames. Rather it felt testimonial, like the retelling of a child called It from Mexico, Un Niño Llamado Cosa. Porque está bien puerco. Estos ya no más pueden vivir así. The movie offers the extremity of circumstance in the relativity of chaos. <laughs> but it doesn't do it in a philosophical sense like Vuelven. I think even something like El Club de los Insomnes has it down better. And it has a more down-to-earth, non-escapist appeal. In full confrontation and aggression, the movie forces you to hate, hate, hate until you love and long. <laughs> I think it was awesome work from Gael Garcia Bernal. If I didn't know any better, but I do, I would say that this is his story. Another day we'll talk more about the movies that kind of inspired movies like this. One of the movies that comes to mind is Los Olvidados by Luis Buñuel. 
And to be honest, this movie kind of reminded me a lot of the Joker movie. And, you know, the director, Gael Garcia Bernal, goes on to state that the movie itself is actually more about intra-family violence and growing up in that type of environment. Hay, hay dos temas que, que, que siento que son eternos todavía. Uno de ellos, un fenómeno natural de crecer, que es la desesperanza juvenil. Y, la, y el otro tiene que ver con eh, la violencia intrafamiliar. And it captured the intrafamily violence very good, you know. While you're watching it, it's very grimy to see Baturo, the way he is towards his wife, you know, the, the nature of it all. You feel encapsulated by this little environment they created. You feel locked in. And I appreciated that whole scenario. You know, it allows for a sort of resolution. Carl Jung talks about a retraceal back to childhood in order to understand some of the things we may have left behind. The specific things that, you know, could have brought us joy, the creative outlets that we now use as adults. Men different mental understandings, you know? I think it's important to note also that this movie encapsulated a whole Mexican perspective towards things. And I did not like Agalera by any means, but he is the person I've met. You know, I've, I've met somebody a lot like Agalera, to be honest. And you just kind of deal with it. You don't have to necessarily like what they're doing, but it's somebody that you make friends with along the way in poverty. So, likable or not likable, it's a reasonable idea. It's a reasonable person that could exist and does exist. I've seen this type of person before. Usually they end up in prison, but, you know, in this instance, he made it out. I think you should definitely give it a watch. Um, I appreciated it in a sort of realistic manner. It may have been grimy, but it was realistic. It may have been grounded, but it was not fantastical enough to be like Vuelven. And I think that it's important to see films like this because it allows you to have a sort of resolution inwardly towards either seeing a perspective you never understood, or if you were in that perspective and understood that, it allows for that sort of conflict resolution after all this time. So sort of closing the gap towards uh, negative circumstances. Um, once again, I'm Mexican Chewy. And hasta mañana, locos. Quieren ser moralmente bien pensantes. Y pues digo, aquí no estamos tratando de dar ninguna respuesta moral en absoluto. ¿no?